In today's episode, Laura asks, what is the industry trend you're most excited about in 2020? Well, the continued growth and the practicality of what's happening in artificial intelligence and machine learning and in marketing data science, of course, there's three specific trends that I think are so exciting and have been exciting for, for quite some time. Uh, number one, continued growth in natural language processing. 2018 was sort of a, a watershed year for a lot of natural language processing and 2019 brought um, some of the largest models available that we can use to process text, to understand it better, to be able to, uh, in some cases, generate it. And that is stuff that I expect to see continue in 2020 not just at the cutting edge of, of research, but at the ability for the average machine learning practitioner to access it and deploy it. So by that, I mean, it's, it's relatively friendly, relatively easy to use. It is not uh, the uh, incredibly challenging, you know, super high tech stuff, although that, that stuff is exciting too. Um, but for the average, well-versed practitioner in data science and machine learning to be able to pick up something in, uh, in NLP and use it. Uh, number two, there are some really amazing things happening in the world of audio uh, with uh, WaveNet a few years back and now MelNet, and a bunch of other uh, technologies that are making it easier for machines to understand audio, particularly the spoken word, and then able to replicate it and and uh, synthesize it. And this is some amazing stuff. Again, there's, if you look at the Melnet demo, you can listen to a machine synthetically generate uh, voices, uh, synthetically generate music. Uh, I think music composition is, has come a long way and continues to accelerate. It's not going to replace humans anytime soon, <clears throat> um, but it's getting there. And it, it, I would say it's at the point now where AI can generate like elevator music, right? Like it's stuff, if you put it on in the elevator, like no one would be offended, um, but certainly it's not gonna win any Grammys. Um, but as with all things in, in machine learning, uh, the technology improves, the models get better. And Whereas two years ago, it was, it sounded like something like your three-year-old would be, you know, hammering pots and pans with spoons. Uh, now it sounds like elevator music. So expect in time for it to become you know, a, a credible alternative for people who want access to music composition and don't have the skills themselves, can't play an instrument, but can direct or conduct an orchestra of machines. Uh, number three, and this is a bit more esoteric, but there will be more and better pre-trained models in 2020. We saw with, in the natural language processing field, uh, OpenAI's GPT-2 released its mega model, the 1.5 billion hyperparameter model in 2019. And that was a really big deal for that company because that was the, the model they were so concerned about uh, falling into the wrong hands. And they said they didn't see any evidence of its, uh, its use. And it's, partly because it's such a beast to try and get to use. Um, but one of the major overall meta trends in AI in the last couple of years has been, uh, instead of generate your own models, pick up a pre-trained model and then fine tune it. Expect to see more of that happen in, in music, image recognition, video, uh, natural language processing, good old fashioned statistical computing, all these things we're seeing more and better models for it that are just, you, you pick it up and you, and you work with it. Now, there are some challenges with that. And the one of the big challenges, of course, is that you are relying on a pre-trained model and you, you don't know for sure how that model was trained. Uh, you have to take on faith to some degree, the model was trained well. So that's gonna be a, uh, a consideration. Which brings me to three trends I'm concerned about. Number one is interpretability and explainability. The ability for machine learning and AI practitioners to explain what it is their models are doing, uh, which is really important and something that the industry is struggling with and will struggle with for some time. Um, 
partly because interpretability is so much more expensive than explainability, but is the gold standard for being able to say, watch and see what the machine is doing at each step of the process. Number two, the things I'm worried about is, is bias. Uh, and this goes hand in hand with interpretability. If we don't know what the machine is doing, we don't know if it's doing something wrong. <laughs> there have been many, many, many examples of machines making decisions that on the surface seem okay, but when you get inside the model or when you see the, the post hoc results, you're like, eh, that's not right. <laughs> so bias is a major concern. Uh, and it's one that the industry is making strides on, but the industry as a whole is not going fast enough. Not going fast enough to allay some of the fears that people have and, uh, and set aside misconception. That's important. And number three, and by far the one I'm most concerned about in 2020, because it is an election year, is the misuse or malicious use of artificial intelligence technology for things like deep fakes uh, is the most popular cited example. Not the one that I think is probably the most prevalent. I honestly think that bots with minimal natural language processing capabilities are a much bigger problem because they're so much easier to scale. Deep fakes don't scale well, right? Deep fakes require a lot of computational power. And yes, you can rent it for pennies on the dollar from like a Google Cloud or something, but to do so, then also makes you not anonymous, right? Because once you sign into something like uh, one of big tech's clouds, every single thing you do is tracked and can be identified by law enforcement. So in a lot of cases, if you're doing something malicious, you need to be doing it in, in the dark, uh, away from the prying eyes of every major tech company ever. So things like you know mass armies of Twitter bots or Facebook bots and things, are a much more practical application and e very easy, very cheap. And they have the ability, thanks to the hyper-partisan world that we live in, to really manipulate people. And it's not the machine's fault that humans are gullible and that humans like to have confirmation bias out the wazoo, but it's the machines enable hostile actors to do more faster and better and at least in the context of the united states of america our defenses uh, have been largely dismantled in the last couple of years with uh, uh, the o o abolition of the cybersecurity uh, council and things like that so we are in a a case where ai can be maliciously used and that's very concerning to me as a practitioner because again we want people to trust this technology if the technology is being used for malicious means really hard to build trust around it. So that's sort of the, the opposite of an exciting trend. It's the, the, the most worrying trend, but that's what we have to look forward to in 2020 uh, for marketing data science, for machine learning, for artificial intelligence. Um, would love your thoughts. Uh, leave them in the comments box below. Subscribe to the YouTube channel and the newsletter. And I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Want help solving your company's data analytics and digital marketing problems? Visit trustinsights.ai today and let us know how we can help you.